What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new action camera review. For today we have the Eken V8S, an action camera that can record in real 4K and it also has electronic image stabilization for 4K recordings and that's something that we haven't seen until now. This camera costs around $110, but like anything else it depends on where you buy this from. And for specs we have the Umbarella A12 S75 processor and the Panasonic MN34110 image sensor. We are gonna start with a very quick unboxing. So the first thing you see is the camera and the waterproof case and turning the box around you can see whatever it's in the box and the specs for the camera. The first thing we get when we open the box is obviously the camera and the waterproof case and the manufacturer suggests that the waterproof case is good to up to 30 meters in the water. But as always I haven't actually been swimming with it but I did have the waterproof case in water and there was no water going in. We also have a very small user manual and this could be useful if this is your first action camera aside from that you're gonna find the remote control and this is not something that we see with most action cameras so yes you can control the camera with the remote control however you're gonna have to install the battery when you first get the remote control but it's very simple to do so. So basically with the remote control you can start recording, stop recordings and take pictures without actually touching the camera so this is definitely a good thing to have. And another cool thing that we get, it's a small tripod for your camera and this again is not something that I've seen for any other action camera, so this is definitely a good thing to have. And for about $110 I'm quite impressed with the stuff that we get for this camera because we don't usually get um, anything like this with other cameras in the same price range. Alright, so the main selling feature for this camera is the electronic image stabilization because this camera can record in 4K and have image stabilization going in 4K recordings and again that's something that we don't see for other cameras with the same processor. Now this could be a downside for some of you but the image stabilization cannot be turned off so the image stabilization is always on no matter what resolution you're recording in. So I don't know, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing but let's check out some samples with the image stabilization. We have another test to the electronic image stabilization. I'm recording in 4K at 25 frames per second and I'm walking normally. So this is how the stabilization looks like. This is a quick sample for image stabilization. I'm currently recording in 2.7K at 30 frames per second and the stabilization is always on. In my opinion the image stabilization worked best than all the other action cameras that I've tried but maybe it's just me but it's definitely better than a lot of other action cameras on the market. The action camera itself it's roughly the same size with all the other action cameras that we've seen in the past and we have plastic pretty much everywhere. So comparing this to something like the SJ7 well this one feels a bit cheaper um, if you know what I mean just because of all that plastic. We have the same familiar setup so on the front you're gonna find the power button and the mode button. You also have a small um, display there, the lens um, on top you're gonna find the recording or the OK button. On one side we have a button that turns on the Wi-Fi and on the other side you're gonna find the micro USB charging port, the HDMI port and the slot for the SD card. There are a couple of downsides to this camera. So the first one would be the SD card. So in order to record at 4K at 25 frames per second, you're gonna need a U3 SD card. And if you're gonna check on Amazon, those are definitely expensive. I mean, you can buy some cheaper ones from China, but it's gonna take a while to actually get them. So that could be one downside. And the second one would be the fact that the camera cannot take an external microphone. So you're gonna have to rely on the internal microphone from this camera. The internal microphone doesn't sound bad, but um, here are a couple of samples that I recorded with the internal microphone. This is our first microphone test. I'm recording in 4K at 25 frames per second. As you can see, I am outside and it's a bit windy. But other than that, um, you should only be able to hear my voice. So this is how the microphone sounds. Another microphone test. Uh, we are recording in 4K at 25 frames per second, but this time around I'm talking behind the camera. So this is how the microphone sounds if you're talking behind the camera. And as you've heard, the microphone recordings sound quite good. Another thing worth mentioning about this camera is the fact that you can actually use it while charging. So if you have a power bank, you can just um, keep recording while charging the camera. So that's uh, definitely a good thing. But I haven't found any settings uh, for a car mode. So you could technically still use this as a dash cam, but the camera's not gonna start recording and stop recording by itself. 
And we are moving on to the battery. So this camera comes with a battery that has a capacity of 1050 milliamps. Now it takes about an hour and a half to fully charge um, the camera. And uh, you can record for about I don't know, 45 to 50 minutes um, in 4K at 25 frames per second. But it really depends how much you have the screen on and so on. And the last thing I want to touch on is the 2 inch display on the back of the camera. So the viewing angles aren't the greatest and the display doesn't get that right. But that's uh, quite normal for action cameras in this price range. So it may be a bit difficult to see the screen depending where you are. This camera can also make a Wi-Fi network and therefore can be controlled from your smartphone. So first you're going to have to install an app on your smartphone and you can find that app in either the Google Play Store or the iOS Store. And after that you basically connect to the camera, to the camera's Wi-Fi and from there you open the app and you connect to the camera. Once connected you can see everything that the camera sees, you can change some settings for the camera and you can view whatever you have saved on the camera and you can even download that stuff on your smartphone. So very very useful but it only works good to up to like 10 meters away from the camera. After that it tends to get disconnected. Before we are checking out some sample recordings, I want to show you some time lapses that I've done with this camera. So all you have to do is select the time lapse mode and then just press record and the camera does everything. So you don't have to stitch the pictures, you just press record and then you take the time lapse from the camera. So very simple to do and they do look kind of cool. And next we are going to check out some daytime recordings that I've recorded with this camera. Most of them are recorded in 4K at 25 frames per second. So let's check them out. This is a close-up test. I'm gonna try getting close to this uh, little bicycle here so you can see how well uh, the camera focuses. So from what I can see on the little screen it does look uh, quite good but again uh, it may look different on the computer. So this was uh, our uh, quick close-up test. As you've seen they don't look bad but I don't think they look as crispy as we've seen for the SJ7 and I'm pretty sure that has to do the image stabilization. Alright next we're gonna check out some recordings done at night time. As you've seen the nighttime recordings were far from perfect but this is quite normal for action cameras mostly in this price range. Actually even if you get like a GoPro they still don't look that um, amazing at nighttime but still better than um, this one. So the nighttime recordings weren't the best. Of course you can even take pictures with this camera and most pictures that um, you're gonna take do look quite good. Again as soon as it gets dark the pictures um, are becoming kind of blurry, kind of grainy so not um, the best experience but if you take pictures during the day they do look quite crisp and good. Using the camera it's quite simple so you basically press that on off button on the front and you can switch in between modes from the same button. So if you want to record video you press that button once, if you want to take a picture you press it again, if you want to see the footage that you have you press it again and so on. So basically the last uh, mode is the settings mode. Now unlike all the other action cameras that can record in real 4K, this one doesn't have that many settings and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean it's good because you can just um, find everything quickly but it could be a bad thing if you wanted to change something. So for example the resolution that we get for video recordings, well we don't really have that many resolutions. You can only choose uh, four resolutions so that's it. For picture taking you can only choose one resolution as well. So I'm not sure how I feel about this. I mean 
if you're just using the camera on auto mode most of the time as me you realistically don't have to change that many settings but for that one time and when you may want to change something well you may not have the settings in there so there you have it this is the Eken V8s so definitely one of the best stabilizations that I've seen for any action camera but maybe the footage is not as crispy as um, the other ones and the other downside would be the fact that we cannot attach an external microphone but it really depends how you're planning to use the camera because not everyone is planning to use an external microphone all right guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did like it press that like button don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching